Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This evening I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the Law Society. It's an important book and one that I'm sure everybody involved in family law knows about and will have in their library. It's called Family Law Protocol, now in a fourth edition, and the forward is by Sir James Mumby. I think it's an important, absolutely must-have book for anybody involved in this um, area of substantive law. We've given the title of this uh, review that Elizabeth and I have written, Much Change in the Law and Practice of Family Law. Now, we'll just have a quick look at it. It's not a big book at all. Green cover. It's part of the Law Society Protocol series. Uh, there is the uh, spine, and then there is the back of it. It's a paperback. It doesn't run to a particularly large number of pages. Uh, 200 in total, it says here. There's the actual index at the back. If we go to the front, uh, there are a number of, uh, of Law Society publications in this series which you might like to know about. There's the front page itself and then you go straight into the protocol, the main protocol itself and so forth. Non-court disclosure, um, various other matters there and all the way through. And then right at the back you have two appendices which cover the useful guidance and online resources and useful contacts and websites. Then you've got the forward to the fourth edition by Mumby, where he makes a number of points which I'm going to refer to in a minute. The uh, date he's written his comments are October 2015, and I'm recording this a month or so later. There's the preface and acknowledgements uh, covering all the main areas. A lot of people have been involved in this. You'll see all the names, and I can't go through all of them. I would like to thank um, a number of people, uh, Rachel Rogers for um, coordinating the information, because a lot of, inf uh, a lot of um, work has been done between both the Law Society and the organisation called um, Resolution. Uh, then we get to uh, the, the protocol endorsements there, which I think again are important. The table of cases are listed. Only a few of those, likewise with the statutes and the statutory instruments. And then you get into the useful abbreviations, which we have there. And then you get into the protocol itself. You see the structure of it, paragraph numbering down the side there. Um, there are no footnotes as such, but what you do have with the protocol is all the information that you actually need. And there's, there's quite a lot of additional information given and effectively what I thought this book did is it tended to update where we were with the protocol itself because it's a very practical a way of dealing with it. Alternative pathways to parenthood is covered at the back. So as I say it's a very important book. It's the way ahead. We've got the rules, we've got the PGs, we're now getting the protocols and we have that in a whole range of areas and that is certainly the way ahead as we try to resolve our differences without finally having to go to court, which is very expensive, and then, of course, the, the difficulties that all of that type of contentious uh, activity uh, raises and creates. This is what we say anyway about the protocol. All family practitioners will welcome the new edition of this important work just published by uh, the Law Society to cover the Family Law Protocol. And as Sir James Mumby says, whilst most of the fundamentals remain unaltered, much has changed in the law and practice of family law. And the new fourth edition of the Protocol sets out exactly what previous judicial commentators have said, and that is the attempt to achieve resolution by means of ADR, with court proceedings being the last resort. And that is clearly what they're trying to do because frankly of the cost, the wear and tear on people, putting it bluntly. Yes, and that is how it should be, we say, because this current book sets out how the pro protocol distills the important elements of practice and procedure, providing both clear and helpful guidance to family practitioners. And let me go through what we've actually got here, because as practitioners again, uh, we can't do without these excellent texts from the Law Society because they set out as far as we are concerned what the official position is um, so there's no messing about uh, concerning how we should approach our work and Family Law Protocol is part of the Law Society Protocol series uh, that's why I'm saying it's effectively official for the purposes and it describes itself well as giving us 
an authoritative set of best practice guidelines, and that's what we need. Um, they do, of course, here, and there are new chapters on forced marriage, domestic abuse and honour-based violence, and the alternative pathways to parenthood, which form part of the current legal agenda for 2015 onwards, with a new family court, which has been created since the last edition appeared. Now, I think the importance of this short work, it's only 200 pages long, is the endorsement given by Mumbies, President of the Family Division, to set out for all of us the standards by which members of the Law Society and the organisation, as I say, called Resolution, are judged. And the appeal of the protocol, we feel, goes wider than that with the massive increase in unrepresented parties because of the folly of the legal aid cuts, which will cost, uh, cost us far more in the long run because of bad administration. There's no getting around that problem. Hopefully, IT and a lot of other things will come in quickly and we'll be able to alleviate some of the problems. But the unrepresented party is going to be a long-term problem. We have to look at it as practitioners. It's also leading to an, an, an inequality, an unequal balance between one side where you're fully represented another side where there's completely lacking any form of representation. What does the judge do then when well, he has to use the CPR, which can link in with family procedure rules, to uh, give some discretion as to how in fact cases are handled? Now, it's pointed out that the Law Society and its association with Resolution and other leading organisation providers, interest groups and leading figures and users in this field of law broke new ground by introducing this go for it or go to text for family law practitioners in 2002 and we commend it today in its fourth edition because it was I think groundbreaking and I think it gives a great deal of help. Mumby writes that it is an invaluable good practice guide to all who work within the field of family law and he's right it doesn't disappoint so thank you very much indeed. The publication date is cited at 2015. Quick look at it again. It's only a very small book. It's one you should know about if you're involved in, uh, in that particular area. There's the spine and then there's the back. If you're involved in family matters, you've got to know about this book itself because it goes very well with all of the other, other books that one has. For instance, I'm just opening right in the middle. Care Proceedings. I head straight to Brussels too, as revised right there. So you've got a lot of hard-hitting information. You do have case law mentioned as well, which is helpful. So this is very much a friend to anybody in need when it comes to an understanding of, of how the protocol works and how we're going to tackle family law matters in the future. Thank you very much to all concerned for producing it. A great debt actually to the Law Society and the people who are responsible for having done the hard work. And I'll just show their names there. A lot of, lot of people involved. Thank you to all of them. We appreciate what you've done. Bye-bye.